video for you today. I don't usually do haul videos on this channel, but I bought a whole bunch of new kind of gear type travel accessories uh, for our trip to Italy, and I thought it would be really interesting for some of you to see those things, because there's things I'm kind of some things I'm trying out for the first time, and some things that I'm just re purchasing. Um, and I thought I would also like try to do the haul part pretty quickly and then come back after we're home from our trip or at the end of our trip and tell you what I used and what worked and what didn't and why. So kind of a haul, first impressions, and then an actual like I've used it review. Um, so first of all, we're going to Venice and Lake Como in Italy. My husband and I are. We've been planning this trip for a while and we're very excited. So I bought a couple of um, guidebooks and a couple of maps. Now I only bought guidebooks for Venice because you really can't find a dedicated Lake Como guidebook. You can find like a lake region guidebook, but we're really treating our Lake Como portion of the trip, which is the second portion, as more of a kind of chilling out, kind of low key uh, portion, whereas the Venice one, we're going to be like all out tourists and go walking around every day and see things and stuff. So I bought two books that I'm hoping to read on the plane over. Uh, I bought the Fodders, Fodders, isn't that it? Fodders Travel, Venice and also The Lonely Plan Planet. Um, so I will let you know if these books are good. I believe um, they both also come with pull-out maps, which is nice to have extra maps, of course. I did also buy The Lonely Planet Italian Phrasebook and Dictionary. This is nice and small and light and easy to carry around. When traveling in a foreign country where English isn't the native language, I like to have at least something. In my case of a pinch, I don't know a lick of Italian except for like ciao <laughs> and bella. So that I think will come in really handy. Plus, we're not bringing our cell phones with us. We decided not to, you know, worry about international cell plans and stuff. So we won't have, like, Google on the go. So we're, we're old school in it here. We're, we're taking books. That's right. We're also bringing actual maps. I love these Streetwise maps. I'm sorry if they're glaring off the light a little bit. These are really nice quality laminated maps. I first learned about these when I moved to New York City as a freshman in college. I got one of these um, to help me kind of orient with the city, although I was, I know a lot about the city because we, um, we traveled there every year, multiple times a year because my grandparents lived in downtown Manhattan, but these are great maps because they are durable, they are clear, they are easy to read, laminated, so nice. So I can put them in my bag and have them on the go. And we also have those backup maps that can come in the guidebooks. And so I got the one for Venice and the one for the Italian Lake District. Again, they don't have one dedicated just to Lake Como region, but the Lake District gives you a general um, sense of the area, which is nice. So those are kind of my guidey, touristy things. Now, traveling in Europe, Don and I have traveled in Europe together and separately before, and security and being aware of pickpockets and thieves is definitely high on our priority list. And I decided to try a couple of things, new things this time. We haven't been to Europe in quite a while. Um, so I know there's this new kind of um, theft where people can scan you, like they don't even have to rob you physically, they can like scan you with an RFID scanner, um, which can grab information off of any of your cards or passports or things that have a chip in them, and a lot of them do now. So I thought I'd give these RFID blocker kind of security things a go. So I bought this for Don, and he said he was, he was open to wearing it. It's a blocker hidden pocket by Eagle Creek. And it's basically got some sort of fabric in it that's supposed to stop the um, scanner from being able to scan those uh, that information from you. And it has two belt loops, one brown, one black. So you basically like loop it into your belt, and you can like either, I mean, you could probably just stick it in your pocket, or you could loop it like into your pants. Um, this is, I think more a man thing because men tend to have like baggier, looser pants that have room for this sort of thing. But he's gonna give it a shot and we'll see if he likes it. And then for me, I did a lot of research on this bag before I bought it actually because it was a little bit more pricey. But something really interesting and I really like the concept behind it. This is the Pack Safe um, 
I think it's called the City Safe 350 G2 Travel Backpack. Now, I have never really been a fan of traveling with backpacks um, when I'm not in an area that I feel confident about. Like, I usually like a crossbody that I can get in front of me and feel more secure about. Um, but traveling around all day on foot in Venice, I know we're going to be carrying sweatshirts and water and maybe an umbrella. I'm not sure. Um, I just know that my sh it's like not good balance, even with a crossbody bag. If you put a lot in it, it gets off balance. And I'm gonna have my DSLR maybe with me, and I wanted a backpack, but I wanted to feel good about it. And this one's really cool. It has a lot of neat features. Um, I'll just read some of them to you really quickly. It has an RFID safe um, identity, you know, blocking pocket in the inside, and I'll give you up close shots of the inside here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, it has a uh, slash guard um, fabric, so it's hard to get a knife through. Like people can just like come and knife your bag and get things out that way. And the straps are have like stainless steel wires in them, so they're slash proof as well. What I really liked about this is it has a couple of locking features for the zippers. Um, so you can there's this little toggle here. And you can actually like toggle it to the zippers to keep them shut. That would be really hard for somebody to steal from you trying to get that zipper open without you knowing. Like that would be really hard. And the other thing it has is a lockable, um, like the strap comes open and this locks onto the a chair or whatever or you know whatever you want to lock it onto for added security. So and I like the blue. It seems really nice. It's not too big. It fits comfortably on my back. And it's got some nice it's got some nice pockets and stuff and I'm pretty sure I can fit my camera in there as well. So those are kind of like the security things that I bought. Now speaking of cameras, I've been watching um, I hope this is right Sonia's travels. I think that's the name of her channel here on YouTube. And she has some great gear um, suggestions, especially for uh, camera equipment. So I thought I'd try out a couple of her suggestions for my equipment. Um, one of which is this Flex Armor Digital Device Case. This is a neoprene um, DSLR camera case. So it's basically like the smallest kind of protective covering case you can get that molds, you know you can fit your DSLR on. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to use this or not. I'll report back and let you know, but I just thought it, I wanted to see it and kind of wanted to try it out. Another thing I got on her suggestion is the Pocket X-Shot camera extender. And this I think will be really handy for um, vlogging in Venice. I'm planning on bringing not only my vlogging camera, but also my GoPro. Um, so I can take like some canal shots and I have the waterproof casing for it and not worry about like it getting really wet or something. Um, so I also bought the GoPro tripod mounts because I know you need that to get the GoPro to get on this. But this is great for vlogging because you can get like farther away and um, so you can get more of us in the shot and more of the background as well. And I know I'm probably going to look like an absolute clown, but it's all it's all in the love of, of for you guys. Uh, but you can also use this to take um, selfies better. So you need to set the timer on your camera and take a nice selfie. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, other kind of device um, suggestions from her. I don't have a really good um, backup battery for our devices like our cell phones and iPads and we are bringing our iPads on these long flights and I'm not sure about outlets on the plane sometimes they have them sometimes sometimes they don't it's nice to have so I bought one that she suggested this is the Skiva uh, Power Vault A2600 and it's made for the iPod and the iPhone and I know you can use it with your iPad as well um, and I like that it has both um, all the cords built in, so you don't have to worry about having other cords with you. Um, so we'll see how we'll see how that works out. And then last suggestion from Sonia, um, I wanted a um, memory card uh, keeper because I have a lot of memory cards I travel with, and she has this great. Um, aluminum one, but I wanted one that was a little smaller. So I actually got inspired by her to find a case, but I bought a different one. This one's by, I think it's called EcoFuse, and it's just this little, it almost reminds me of those like old school CD cases, but it's for memory cards, and it's got different sizes in it. Um, and it just, it's really nice and light, but keeps them all together and protected, so I thought that was kind of neat. Speaking of memory cards, I socked up on a couple more. I bought another, this is my favorite memory card. I like Amazon it has this like frustration free packaging, which is really nice. Um, this is the SanDisk Extreme 32 gigabyte. Um, uh, what, am I, what am I saying here? 
memory card and this is what I use for filming and taking photographs and everything. They're really high quality. I never have a problem with them. I also bought another micro SDHC card for my GoPro so I could have a couple of extras. What other kind of geary type things can I show you? Oh yes, um, I saw these, I've seen these around and I wanted to try them. They're gear ties by Night Eyes. They're reusable rubber twist ties and I thought it'd be kind of fun. I love trying out things like this that keep your cords, you know, managed and in better kind of management. That was redundant. One last kind of techie gear thing I bought. Um, this is actually a repurchase. Um, Don and I have had these soft folio case and stands by Kensington. They're the Comercio uh, model. We've been using and loving these for a year now. Don like loved his into the ground. Mine is still in perfect condition, but Don is very, very hard on his iPad um, and his has kind of gotten a little floppy. But that being said, it is the most well-made um, iPad case that we've ever had. Uh, we um, prefer the kind that come with, uh, ooh, take a lot of packaging there, come with the corners. Um, because I feel like sometimes you drop it and the corners are the, the first to go. And this protects them. And we just like this style where it's easy, pops up that way. That's, that's just our preferred style. But I get a lot of questions on our favorite iPad covers, so I thought I should share that. Other techie gear things, I guess I wasn't done. Eagle Creek has this um, newer line. I haven't seen this before. This is their E-Cubes, so I bought one of each size. Large, medium, and small. I don't know if I'm gonna bring all of them. I just really wanted to see them. They're, it's made with their Spectre material, which is this high um, quality water resistant. Um, it's like what they make lightweight tents out of, um, but it's meant for gear. So I thought this was kind of interesting because I'm not bringing my gear backpack, I'm bringing a different carry-on. I'm actually gonna be doing an updated carry-on on the go style review because I have a new carry-on I'm using by Lipol, Lipol I think it's called, and it doesn't have any, it's not like my um, case logic backpack where it's like really secure. So that's for traveling with my equipment. I'll let you guys know how those go if I like them. And last but not least, I bought some dedicated plugs. We have travel adapters for Europe, but they're mostly for London, like uh, England, because which has totally different plugs because we spent a, a summer working there. Um, so I bought some that are specifically for Italy. Yeah, these are basically the same, but I bought this one that came with a set of three. Um, and they have these type L with the three prongs, that's for Italy. And then I bought this other one that's more of a grounded, I think it's just a higher voltage or something, I'm not exactly sure, but it was different when I bought it on Amazon. Um, and I just wanted to have some dedicated um, charger, um, you know, electronic, you know, things that we can plug our American plugs into and it would work in Italy. Um, and I think that is about it. Uh, that I am going to share with you. For now, I will be back. This is going to be a long video, but I will be back with the second half kind of taking you through the things I use and what I liked about them and if I liked them and if I didn't, what I didn't like about them. So stay tuned for that. I hope you, or I'll see you in a second. Yeah. So let's go to Italy. Hey guys, we have since returned from our trip and as promised, I thought I'd whiz through these products and tell you what I thought about each one because I did use most of them on our trip. So first of all, the guidebooks. I'm just gonna hold up one guidebook because that's the only one that made it home with us out of the three. I took all three to Italy. Um, we read the Lonely Planet book and we just really didn't, we didn't like the way it was laid out. Both me and my husband agreed that it was not very well organized and the information wasn't super helpful or easy to access. There was a lot of grammatical and spelling errors in it, which, you know, I don't know, I feel like you publish a book, you should probably look at those things, and no good. So I didn't even bother to bring that home to, um, bring, you know, uh, make some space and weight allowance in our uh, luggage for the way back. Um, and I just left in the hotel room so somebody else could maybe get some use out of it. And also the Italian phrase book and the, you know, dictionary by Lonely Planet, that was terrible. It was really hard to find anything in it that was useful. Like the way the index was set up, totally not helpful at all. Um, we couldn't even, like, we really wanted to know how to say thank you properly. We know it was grazie something, but we didn't know if it was grazia or grazie or grazie or what. And it couldn't even, that wasn't even in there, like at all. If it was, we couldn't find it. Both of us couldn't find it. And that's how poorly organized the book was if it wasn't there and how 
Like, how can you not have thank you in a, in a, in like a dictionary for another language? So, didn't like those books, left them in Italy. Really liked the Fodor's Travel Venice. This was a really nice guidebook to have. I carried it around with me through Venice. Um, we referenced it a lot. It was very helpful. Could it have been more helpful? Yes, but for the size and weight for carrying it around, I thought it was pretty informative. It was well laid out. It has a lot of nice information in it. Great maps, great like area specific maps, and then of course the beneficial uh, fold out map with a like a lightly laminated side, which is also nice. Um, so I really like this book. I would recommend it. Like I said, probably not the best guidebook on the market, but if you want something small and light and easy to carry, I really like that. We both um, liked it. Now for the maps, the maps did not let us down. Love these Streetwives maps. They're so great with the lamination. Don actually mostly carried this around in his back pocket or I would tuck it into my day bag. It's just so easy to carry around because it's small and compact and it's easy to open up. It's not one of those maps that's like so complicated to like fold up again. Um, but it's really clear and it's got a great index on it which is always useful. Uh, so the Venice one was essential. You know, the Lake District one, we didn't use quite so much. It was handy when we went to Bellagio, and it's great to give you a sense of um, the whole Lake District and some of the more popular towns. Did we really need this? Probably not, but it was nice to have, and I'm glad that I bought it. So that was that for the guidebooks. Now for the special um, money-carrying things that I bought. Uh, so there was this wallet for Don that I got for him and it has the RFID blocking technology in it uh, like I said in the hall part and the belt loops and it's meant to be worn like close to the body like you loop it through your belt and then flip it over and like tuck it into your pants if you're a man. I guess you could do that as you're a woman too but none of my pants are loose enough to accommodate that sort of thing but this Don actually just wore it. He wore it looped through the belt. He wore it through both loops and he just kept it in his front pocket and you could really only see maybe a little bit of it sometimes um, but he kept it in his front pocket looped to his belt with the zipper facing in so the zipper was you know closest to his I mean for lack of a better word crotch so it'd be harder to like reach in and unzip or you know get it uh, any of the money or anything had no problem with pickpocketers had no problem with thievery of any kind, whether, you know, on person or through the RFID scanning stuff that the people do now. It was great. It was perfect. And Don actually said it was really easy to carry. Um, it's much lighter than his normal wallet and we could fit change in it. We could fit a lot of things in it. Um, you know, there's a lot of change in Europe with the Euros. Uh, so the, he really liked that. Came in handy. My bag. This was an amazing thing to have for this trip. I wore it every day. This is my City Safe uh, bag, my Pack Safe. I love it. I love the locking zipper feature. I never worried about my things in my bag. Carrying a backpack, you have to be extra cautious. Um, and I never worried once because of the locking zipper. Also, it has this locking strap, which I used a few times when we were sitting in like outdoor cafes just to make sure my bag stayed with me on the chair and wasn't easy to grab or anything. So that was great. And it's just so roomy and nice. But again, it has RFID blocking technology pocket in it, so I kept my credit cards and the things I wanted, you know, to bring in that one pocket. Held everything I wanted, was super comfortable to wear, and a great neutral color. So I really, really like that bag. Um, so that was it for our, like, money thing. So, so far, pretty good on the haul stuff. Now for the sort of the tech gear that I bought for the trip. This um, DSLR camera case I used mainly when... Um, when we were tra like actually traveling, so on the plane and on trains, um, to keep my camera safe in my bag without needing a big bulky thing. Because I have this new carry-on that I was traveling with because it was lighter, and I'm gonna probably do a whole video on that as well. Um, and I just didn't want to bring a whole big clunky case for my camera. And this protected it just fine in the bag without any need for any more structured thing. Um, I, you know, I was very, very careful with my bag knowing that my camera was in it and it was just in this, but even so, it did a great job of uh, uh, protecting the body and the lens and it was basically all I really needed. Uh, I didn't carry it around with me, but it is easy enough to carry around with you because it's so light and it's basically just like your ca size of your camera. Also for tech gear, there was the uh, X-Shot camera extender. This is a monopod. I was a little, okay, I'm going to be honest. I was like a little nervous bringing this because I thought I would look like an absolute moron carrying this thing around. No, I was not. Not only did I not look like a moron, 
everybody and their brother had one of these or something similar. They were even in Venice selling these like every five feet there was a guy in the street selling something like this. The more popular one was the one that holds your iPhone and like kind of like clamps around your iPhone. They also sell them with the tripod um, mount as well. So I wasn't the only one carrying around this stick and let me tell you I used it on my camera for the entirety of the trip. Um, it was just easy to carry with my camera on it. Sometimes I just kept it on like this when I wanted to get shots over the boat edge or um, you know of higher up places and I could reach or see or something. It was just so handy and like I said I just kept my camera mounted on it basically the whole time. Um, and it's easy to carry, it's small, it's light. I know I'm going to be using that a lot from now on. Also for camera stuff, what else? Camera specific. Oh yeah, my memory and cards and stuff. I've used the same memory cards for years. Those are great. Um, other gear type things. Um, oh yes, I bought the um, Skiva backup battery powers for our iPads and iPhones. Well, we were lucky and were able to upgrade both ends of our flight uh, flights both ways uh, to business class where they had um, in-seat power. Um, so we actually didn't need these, but it was nice to have it, good for peace of mind. Came fully charged. I haven't done anything to it. It's still fully charged. Um, so it's good that it's not one of those devices that like loses power even if you're not using it. That's annoying. And these are expensive. So I haven't really used this. I can't really comment on how well it works because I didn't have to, but I was glad to have it. It gave me some peace of mind just in case of emergency. Also the gear ties, those little rubber ties that I bought. I really like these. I've been using the Velcro um, cord ties for years. These make it even easier because it's just one little thing and they come in different sizes. I bought the small size because I thought it would be perfect for cords like this. This is my Kindle cord. It is. It's absolutely perfect. It bunches them up and they're super easy to use. Um, I like the different colors so you can really like color coordinate if you want to or color code or whatever you want to do. And um, I will be buying more of those because I really like them. They might be my new favorite cable bundler. Um, what else did I buy? Oh yes, the, these cases from Eagle Creek. These are the Packet Spectre, um, I think they're called the E-Cubes, and they're min meant for um, gear. And I bought them in three different sizes, the medium, large, and the small. This is the small. This is the only one I ended up packing. I was kind of hoping to use the medium or the large size for my DSLR, but it ended up being too bulky for the carry-on I was using. So like I said, I just ended up using the neo neoprene sleeve and that worked just fine. But I did use this to pack, the small one, to pack my GoPro and all of my GoPro related gears and accessories into it. And I packed this in my suitcase and it worked great at protecting it. It's lightweight enough that it doesn't add a lot of bulk, but it's got a lot of nice padding in it. I like the the um, adjustable uh, dividers, so you can make it, you know, have different sizes depending on what you are storing in it. And it's a really great size for equipment. You can definitely use it for other things as well, but they are padded extra, like extra padding for like gear, like tech gear specifically. And I see myself using those other two sizes at some point. Another nice feature is the color. Like no, orange is not my favorite color, but this made it really easy to spot in my bag. So when we got to the hotel, I don't like packing um, equipment in my bag unless I have to. I just really didn't need to bring my GoPro on the plane. I felt like it was okay in the suitcase. Uh, we lock our suitcases with the TSA approved lock, so I wasn't very worried about it. But I wanted to make sure it was there right away and being in the orange case, I was easily able to pick it out of my bag and be like, okay, there it is. It's fine. And then I think that's about it, except for, last but not least, the plugs. We have bought all these adapters for Italy. Um, I had bought, I think, six of these or two, three packs of these little white ones. They came in a three pack, like I said, and one of these. We did not need this many adapters. Yes, we do have that many things to charge between all of my cameras and our devices, but each hotel room in Italy probably only had maybe three open um, what do we call this? outlets. That's the word. So I probably would next time would only bring maybe four of these, um, but they came in handy. One thing I will say that I didn't think to bring was a universal European charger for our layovers in, we had one layover in Madrid and one layover in in England and they have different power sources in those places. I mean they have different like plug shapes and you can buy a universal plug adapter. We actually bought one in Madrid that worked as well. 
in um, England so we could um, charge John's laptop basically when we were in our layovers in the airport. So that was the one thing I didn't bring that I should have brought, but we were able to buy it pretty inexpensively at the airport. So like I said, these worked great. I probably would just maybe buy um, less of them. And I did actually prefer this little one that was a little bit more expensive um, because it has the top plug and the side grounded plug. Um, so that, that was a really nice feature. Plus I felt like specifically my computer charger fit much more snugly in this than it did in these little white ones that came in the three pack. Felt like it was a little loose and could kind of fall out. Whereas it was a nice snug tight fit in this and I didn't have to worry about it falling out when I was charging things. And that was everything in my review. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And of course I will have photos and product links on my blog as usual. Thanks for watching you guys. Take care. Bye.